Hi everyone, this is Josh Carney. I'm a recording engineer, producer, musician, and songwriter. And welcome to my recording and editing audio course in Presonus Studio One Five. In this course, I'll show you how to set up your project or set up your song file as it's called in Studio One. I'll talk about importing and working with imported audio. I'll go through all of the audio editing tools and audio editing functions. I'll demonstrate how to record DI instruments like electric guitar and bass. And I'll demonstrate various different techniques for recording with microphones, including single track recordings as well as multi-track recordings. Studio One is available for both Mac and PC. For this course, I'll be using the Mac version. So if you're a PC user, anytime I use the command key, it'll be control for you. And anytime I use the option key, it'll be alt for you. But I'll try to point out both the Mac and Windows shortcuts as I go along. For this course, I'm going to record a new song from scratch. So I'm just gonna be working with the same song file for the entirety of this course. So the first thing I need to do is create a new song file. So I'll click new song. I'll just call this new song. And one of the very first things you wanna do before you start recording is set the sample rate and resolution or bit depth of your song. So let's start with the sample rate here. Sample rate is the number of samples taken per second during the analog to digital conversion process. So this controls the frequency range of the recording. So higher frequency instruments like cymbals, the upper range of strings, the upper range of the voice and acoustic instruments, these will all benefit from using a higher sample rate. However, the thing you have to keep in mind is these upper sample rates eat up more processing power and they also will take up more hard drive space. So you have to be wary of what sample rate you use because you don't wanna fill up your whole hard drive and you also don't want your song to keep crashing on you if your processor can't keep up. So I'll typically use at least 48 kilohertz for this. Now historically, 44.1, 88.2, and 176.4 were used for audio applications, and 48K, 96K, and 192K were used for video applications. But those standards have kind of been blurred over time, so there's nothing wrong with using 48K for a music project. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Next, you have your resolution, or bit depth as it's usually called in other DAWs. You have four options, 16 and 24-bit integer values, or 32-bit and 64-bit floating point values. Resolution or bit depth is the number of binary numbers or bits of information recorded per sample. So at 16-bit, you have 16 ones and zeros that are recorded for each sample. At 24-bit, there's 24 of those. What these control is the dynamic range and the noise floor of your recording. Essentially, these control the dynamic range between the noise floor of a recording and the peak level of a recording. So all recording media, including digital, has inherent noise in it. And eventually you can get down to such a low level that you just hear noise in the recording. Now, typically you don't hear this floor noise in digital recordings, but it can become a problem as you add more and more effects anything that might bring up the volume of a recording, or maybe if you're making some very quiet recordings, if you go and pull up the gain on a really quiet recording, you might start to hear the background noise floor. So at 16-bit, the noise floor is at 96 dB below peak level, so that's negative 96 dB. At 24-bit, it's negative 144 dB. Now there's two options for floating point bit depths. 32-bit float has 144 dB of dynamic range, just like 24-bit. However, it has an additional range of six decibels above full scale. So the top full scale, zero dB, that's your normal clipping level. If you go any higher than that, you clip. So what 32-bit floating point does is it gives you an additional six dB above clipping level. Now, this doesn't mean that you can record louder. This just means that you can normalize any clips down to zero dBFS. So I typically only use floating point bit depths for live recordings where clipping might happen unexpectedly. If you properly set your recording levels, this won't be a problem. So I generally use 24-bit for all of my studio recordings. 
All right, I'll make sure that my time base is set to bars. My tempo, my time signature, and my key signature, I can change all of these later. So I'll just click OK. And this brings me to my song page where I can get started with my recording.